Welcome to Fold It Lab Report number eight. I am BCAP. I am still working from home. Today I'm recording this video remotely with my colleague Ian H. If you're new to Fold It, welcome. We do these monthly lab report videos to recap recent developments in Fold It and tell Fold It players more about the research that we're doing. As you can tell, the coronavirus shutdown continues. We've had some trouble getting materials for some of our lab experiments. And this means that the coronavirus binder testing has been delayed. The company that makes the custom DNA for these experiments has had some mechanical difficulties with their DNA production. They are troubleshooting that and we think that they'll have it all sorted out soon, but we are ready to begin those experiments as soon as those materials arrive at the lab. Until that happens, we will keep running new binder design puzzles so that we have more designs to test uh, if the need arises. Puzzle updates. This month we have four puzzle updates. First, aflatoxin. This is part of an ongoing research project to design a new protein enzyme that could break down aflatoxins. Aflatoxins are cancer-causing molecules that are produced by fungus that grows on lots of the world's food supply. In our most recent puzzles, we are providing two designs that have been tested in the lab as part of a pilot experiment. The Siegel lab at UC Davis found that these initial designs were still able to break down control molecules, but they were inactive against aflatoxin. What we think is happening is that the designed loops in these enzymes are misfolding. In the most recent puzzles, we are challenging you to refold loops that were designed in previous folded puzzles. If we can figure out how these loops are misfolding, then we can correct the designs so that they are active against aflatoxin. The second puzzle update, we have some coronavirus prediction puzzles. These go back to more traditional folded puzzles where we are predicting the structure of known proteins. The targets in this case are proteins that are encoded in the coronavirus genome. The coronavirus genome is an RNA genome and there are sections of it that appear to code for proteins. By now, you're probably familiar with the spike protein, which is found on the surface of the coronavirus, uh, but the coronavirus also includes other proteins that help it replicate and infect. Since we know the coding regions of the genome, we can figure out the sequence of these proteins. If we can predict how the sequence of these proteins will fold up into a three-dimensional shape, that could reveal to us the precise function of these proteins and possibly even let us design drugs to stop them. Third puzzle update, we have continued our campaign for an antiviral protein binder against the coronavirus spike. The intention with these puzzles is to design a protein that could bind to the coronavirus spike protein and stop it from recognizing and infecting human cells. In the most recent puzzles, we've been providing initial designs from Foldit players that we'd like to improve. This is a tricky optimization problem because Oftentimes, when we try to improve one feature of a protein design, there's some trade-off and we take a hit in some other features. The encouraging thing is that for some of these designs so far, simply by recycling them back to you and letting the community work on them, we see improvements across the board. Please see the blog for more details about what makes a good protein binder. Fourth puzzle update, this month we launched a new campaign to target a different aspect of the COVID-19. We are trying to design a protein that could tone down the cytokine storm that occurs in the most severe COVID-19 cases. We've created a whole separate video update just about this new strategy. Check out the video below for an interview with Dr. Amut Olge. Lab updates. This month we have a cool result that we got kind of by accident. As you may know, when we study protein designs by Foldit players, one of the last and hardest tests that we do is to crystallize the protein to determine its structure. This experiment is what finally tells us whether the protein you designed actually folds into the structure that you designed it to. Earlier this year, when I was cleaning out the fridge, I found an old protein sample from testing we did a couple years ago with proteins that had crystallized within the test tube. This was a welcome surprise. Normally, it can be an arduous and difficult process to grow protein crystals, but these crystals were ready to be shot by x-rays. We uh, performed an x-ray diffraction experiment to get structural data about the proteins in the crystals. We have a new crystal structure for a protein designed by Foldit players. This is a design by Fiendish Ghoul in Puzzle 1321 way back in December of 2016.
we have a design of the month. This month's design is one from player Bruno Kestamont. This is a design from Puzzle 1824, the first anti-inflammatory binder design. We have here a very nice three helix bundle from Bruno. Uh, again, a very solid core of completely orange residues and blue residues on the outside. So this looks like a protein with a good chance of folding up. Um, also, we have very short loops between the helices, and this is good. These are structured short loops, and everything else in this protein is a helix. Um, so that's a, usually a good indication that a protein can fold into a stable structure. Um, at the binding interface, we see lots of orange contacts, which is good. It makes strong binding and some nice hydrogen bonding. Um, we do want to be careful about burying some polar groups. There is a glutamate down here that might not be able to make all of the hydrogen bonds it needs to. Um, but aside from that, this looks like an excellent structure, very promising. Um, I do also want to shout out to Bruno. Bruno shared, in addition to this structure, several other completely different attempts at this puzzle, um, which is really great. When you play these design puzzles, you don't have to spend all of your time designing just one protein. Often the best way to play Fold It is to try one approach and then share that with us and then try something completely different. The more different approaches we have to these problems, the better chance we have of finding an effective binder. That's all that we have this month. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for playing, stay safe and keep folding, and we'll see you next month. <laughs>